So we want to start, uh, I want to start a series uh, this week and the next couple of weeks. I'm calling it Me Versus Me. And so uh, every week we will dive into different parts of this, um, but I'm excited to get started. So uh, a friend of mine uh, gave me a call. This is a, uh, about a month or so back. Um, in my family, in my circle, I am the, the tech guy. Um, if anybody has any tech questions, um, they usually give me a call, whether it's phones or, or setup or things of that nature. I'm usually the person that they call and they, said, they say, hey, you know, I have this specific application um, that I want to use. And it's like, I want to use this thing. And I, so I, I, got, I saw it. I got this nice computer. I got all the specs. I got the upgraded memory. I got the upgraded RAM. I got the uh, extended hard drive because I, I can't wait to go to town on this. But I'm having a problem with it. And I can't seem to figure out what it is. And, you know, as, as I tried myself, I figured that you would be the first person that I would call. And I said, all right, well, my first question, is, as always, is what type of computer is it? <laughs> it's not what you think, guys. I know. But I said, what type of computer is it? And they told me, they said, oh, it's a PC. I said, well, that's your problem right there. <laughs> Let me finish. Let me finish. I said, that is your problem right there. Without even looking at the specs, uh, without uh, going to, to, to even look at the computer, I already know what your problem is. And they asked, they said, well, how do you know that? I said, the program that you're using uh, isn't available on the operating system that you're trying to use it in. Uh, this program can only work efficiently when it's being used in the operating system that it's designed for. I said, the reason that you're having issues with this program isn't because of the computer. It isn't because of the specs or the RAM or the memory. You're using the wrong OS. You're using the wrong operating system. And until you change operating systems, you won't be able to get the results that you're looking for. What am I talking about? For those of y'all who didn't make it to the light, <laughs> some of us have been trying to figure out why we've been working so hard, trying so hard every day, day in and day out to do the right thing. We've been trying our best to not fall into temptation. We've been trying our best to, to, to see those goals, those life master goals that we've tried to, to get to. And we're not seeing the results that we're looking for. And we're trying to find out why. And I submit to you today that it is not due to your lack of trying. It is not due to your desire or your willingness. The issue is you're operating under the wrong system. See, there are two operating systems in this world, two modes of operation in this world. And at any point in time, you're either operating in one or you're operating in the other system. There is the operation of flesh or self and its way of doing things. And there is operating in the spirit and its way of doing things. John chapter 6, verses 52, says this. The Jews disputed among themselves, saying, how can this man give us flesh to eat? And so what happens here is Jesus is giving this uh, metaphor, if you will. He's telling this story, and, and, and the, the Pharisees and the disciples are hearing him, and we pick up on their conversation, and they say, how can this man give us flesh to eat? So Jesus, uh, feeling the need to be nice and explain himself, he says, truly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks on my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father. So whoever feeds on me, he will also live because of me. He said, this is the bread that came down from heaven. Not like the bread that the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. 
Jesus said these things in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. When many of the disciples heard this, they said, this is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that, that, that his disciples were grumbling about them, said, do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? And here is where I want to land. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Now, for those of you who, who may not have any scriptural background and you're trying to figure out um, why is Jesus talking about cannibalism, let me go ahead and tell you he's not. Okay? Um, it could be a little weird if this is your first time in here and the first scripture I read to you is talking about drinking of blood and eating of flesh. This is not that kind of church. Okay? So let me just put that out there for you. This is a metaphor. When Jesus is talking about drinking of my blood and eating of my flesh, he is talking about the word of God. The word of God. He's saying, this bread, give us this day our daily bread, the bread of life. He's saying, whoever uh, enters into relationship with me, Whoever spends time in my word, who, whoever takes a minute and sits down and, and, and eats the bread of life with me, he shall live. This is what he's saying. So, I, I, you know, I, I just want to, you know, let you know this ain't, this ain't that type of thing. But, but what we want to land in the end is where he says it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh is of no help at all. See, Jesus is here assisting the understanding of the disciples. And they was right, because if I was standing there, I probably would have said the same thing. This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? They're saying, this is deep, Lord. I don't know how anybody could walk this out. How, could, how am I supposed to live a life just continually hearing from you and continually uh, uh, supping with you and entering into this relationship and having this matrimony with you? How can I do that? And he says, you can't. He says, in your flesh or operating in the flesh's system and its way of thinking and doing things, it is impossible because the flesh is of no help at all. It is the spirit who gives life. It is by walking in the spirit that you will receive the power and the ability to walk this out. It is the spirit who helps you. We, as human beings, we are a tripart being. We are a spirit. We possess a body. Excuse me. We possess a soul and we live in a body. Okay. That is how this works. And he is saying here, he's saying this flesh, this thing right here, this sin nature, this thing that desires to go against, this is of no help at all. So when you try to walk in the desire of sin or the desire of this flesh and your fleshly emotions and desires, it is of no help to you. It is the spirit that will allow you to get life. That's what he's saying. Break it down. Okay. I thought I did, but I got you. When you're trying to overcome a struggle in your life, the flesh is of no help at all. When you're trying to work so hard to, to get a position at a job and, and you're trying to make money and, you, and you're there 40 and 50 hours a week and you're trying to figure out why you're working so hard and, and your marriage is suffering and your family is suffering, but you're trying to work and you're trying to do it on your own, it is because the flesh is of no help at all. Am I saying that you should just, just be inactive? Am I saying that you should do nothing? No, that is not what I'm saying. But there is a difference in uh, working and walking as if it depends on you in the flesh and working or walking as if it depends on God and in the spirit. There is nothing that will be accomplished in life that will be sustained in life unless it is accomplished through the power and the spirit of God. Because what happens is we look at people who have money, we look at these millionaires, you say, Pastor Keenan, that's not right because I see this person and this person has billions and this person has millions and it looks like they're sustaining, but I would challenge you to check their heart. Come on. 
Because I'm sure that what they will tell you is, I have this and I have that and I have these and I have that, but I'm still lonely. But I'm still hurting. But my family is still a mess. But I'm still having lack in some area of my life. Why? Because I work as if it depended on me. And the flesh is of no help at all. Some of you have tried your best to stop doing that thing that you've gone to the Lord a million times about. You've tried your best to, to temper your attitude. You've tried to stop drinking. You've tried to stop lashing out in anger. And you wonder why, even though I'm trying and I'm trying, why hasn't my transformation fully manifested? You tried, but trying in your ability and your power yields different results when you're walking in the spirit and the ability and the power of the Lord. It's two different results. It's two different ways. The Spirit provides the power for you to move forward in your life as a believer. The flesh is no help at all. Don't believe me? How many times have we tried to lose weight? Oh, I'm just going to raise my hand by myself. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Don't even worry about it. Don't. No, no, no. It's too late now. It's too late. It's too late. Because guess what? When the food is free and it's good, <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. When that favorite auntie or cousin or, or somebody cook and, and, and it's just, you better, than, in my culture, I'm just speak for me. In my culture, when the food is there, you eat it. You better not say no. It'll be a sad day for you. If you say, the, what I'm saying, the flesh is of no help at all. It's no help. It's useless. And Jesus is saying the same thing. He's saying, you've tried and you've toiled and you've done this and you've tried that. And you, you keep trying and you keep trying. But what I'm trying to show you is that it is impossible without me. And anytime you try to do anything and I'm not involved, It's destined to fail. It is destined to fail. It is the spirit that provides you the power to move forward in your life as a believer. Romans chapter 8, verses 5. Helps me out a little bit here. Those who are motivated by the flesh only pursue what benefits themselves. But those who live by the impulses of the Holy Spirit are motivated to pursue spiritual realities. For the sense and reason of the flesh is death, but the mindset controlled by the Spirit finds life and finds peace. In fact... The mindset focused on the flesh fights God's plan and refuses to submit to its direction because it cannot. Refuses. Here, Paul is identifying those two operating systems that we spoke about, and he's showing us also the consequences that are associated with walking in each. He says walking in the flesh, he says, is death. Because it pursues sin. But he says walking in the spirit is life and peace. Ultimately, that is our goal. Life and peace. But when we try other methods to pursue it, in everything that we're doing, Every goal that we have, every pursuit in life that we have, we have to ask ourselves, am I walking in the spirit or am I operating in the flesh? In everything that we do, in everything that we desire, in everything that we're trying to attain, am I walking in the spirit Am I following the unction of the, of the Holy Ghost? Am I, am I listening to hear what the Lord is saying? Or am I moving and working as if it depends on me? 
oh, I got I to gotta get this, I got to do that. Okay, you know, I got to do this because this and that. And then when I do this and I do that. And, and, and when you're not leaving any room for the Spirit, when you're not leaving any room for the Lord to lead you, it is a good identifier that you're walking in the flesh. It is a great identifier, excuse me, that you're walking in the flesh. Romans, let's see here, Romans 8, uh, verses 8. For no matter how hard they try, God finds no pleasure with those who are controlled by the flesh. But when the spirit of Christ empowers your life, you are not dominated by the flesh, but by the spirit. And if you are not joined to the spirit of the anointed one, you are not one of him. He says, no matter how hard you try, no matter what you do, God finds no pleasure with those who are controlled by the flesh. How can I tell the difference, pastor? How how do I know? I hear what you're saying. I see what you're saying. But how do I know if I'm walking in the spirit or if, as the scriptures say, I'm being dominated by the flesh? Well, Paul was talking to Romans in there. He's talking to the Galatians and he gives us a a list of just some of the results or some of the identifiers of those who are living according to the flesh and the spirit. Galatians uh, chapter 5. And I want to start in verse 19. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19, he says, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Okay. What are they? Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. I'm just reading a book. He says, anyone who lives this this sort of way will not inherit the kingdom of God. He says, it's just not it. And so what we'll do is we'll look at the big ones and we're like, oh, no, that's that's not, I'm good. You know, this is, you know, I'm not having wild parties, you know. I don't have any any sorcery in my life. But we'll skip right over idolatry. Well, pastor, I don't have any idols in my house. Yeah, you don't need a... Anything that you place above God is an idol. Anything that you put before God is an idol. Anything. He says all of that. And so we have to be careful that as we read these, that we don't just skim over it and say, oh, you know, you know, that's not me. No, we always look to find ourselves and say, Lord, it, where do I see myself here? Show me myself. He says, anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. So these were just some of the identifiers of those who are walking in in the flesh. Well, what about walking in the spirit? Paul says um, in that scripture in Romans, the mind of the spirit is the mindset on the purpose and the will of God. And it comes from continually walking with or being in relationship with God. And he gives us identifiers of this as well in verse 22. We, we read 19 through 21, verse 22 uh, in Galatians 5 says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Okay. And I thought it was great that he uses the analogy of fruit here because um, I'm a uh, pseudo gardener. I used to garden. I know people who garden. I don't currently garden, but I know about gardening. Um, but I thought that he, you know, it was great that he used this example here because uh, it, it starts out with a seed. And that seed goes into the ground. And then as you care for that seed, as you nurture that seed, as you water that seed, as you till that ground, it produces a fruit or a harvest. 
And so uh, uh, the scripture here says the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. So if, 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 if the Holy Spirit is the seed, then in order for it to produce a fruit, then that means that we have to have it in us. That means that it has to be cultivated. That means that it has to be taken care of and, 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 and looked at and given attention to. And as a result of us walking in the Spirit, it will produce this kind of fruit in our lives. But what's the fruit? He said the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. He said these are a few of the fruits that, that will be the result as you walk in the Spirit. And then he says there is no law against these. He says, there is no limit to these things operating fully in your life when you walk in the Spirit. These are the results of a life led by the Spirit. This is the life that Paul is saying is to our benefit as believers. This is what Paul was referring to in Romans when he said that we are to live a, have a life that is a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. This is the life that the Lord has called us to and empowered us to live. He has given us not only, he said, I want you to do this. Not only that, but I'm going to give you the ability. I'm going to give you the empowerment to walk this out. Our life led by the Spirit is the thing that separates us from the world. It is the difference to those around me. It is why they say, well, why don't they drink anymore? Why don't they cuss people out anymore? Why are they not popping off anymore? Why, why don't they go where they used to go? Why don't they do what they used to do anymore? And the reason is I don't walk like I used to walk. I've chosen to, to live a life with a different operating system. Galatians 5, verse 24 says, Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our life. Not some parts, not just the parts you feel like it, not just the parts that are exposed. He said in every part of our life, that's the part that's in the back, behind the corner that nobody knows. No, he says every part of our life, let us follow the Spirit's leading. He says, I want you to walk by the Spirit. I need you to walk by the Spirit. So now that we know what is happening, now that we've identified these two areas, we've identified the effects of walking in each area, we've identified how each area pertains to our life, now the question is, how do we make a change? Because we've been walking like this for a while and, and we live in this society that tells us to, 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 to you know, hey, if it feel good, you know, run it, like do it. If it whatever you feel, just, just do that. Whatever your emotions tell you to do, just, just do that. We're told to work and to grind until your fingers get to the bone to get what you want and and get what you deserve. We're told to do that. Our culture has told us to do that and forget anyone and anything that stands in our way. How do we not operate by the impulses of the system of the flesh that's all around us? How do we do that? How do we walk in the spirit? Galatians 5 verse 16 says, I'm going to read this in the Amplified, and then I'll read it in the Passion Passion Translation. The Amplified says, but I say, walk habitually in the Holy Spirit. Seek him and be responsive to his guidance. And then you will certainly not carry out the desire of the sinful nature 
which responds impulsively without regard for God and his precepts. The passage translation as the worship team comes, it says, let me emphasize this. As you yield to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit, you will abandon the cravings of your self-life. As you yield to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit, you will abandon the cravings of your self-life. I love the Amplified. It says, seek him and be responsive to his guidance. Seek him and be responsive to his guidance. I don't know about y'all, but uh, uh, I, there's been some instances where I've lost some money in the house. And let me tell you something. When I lose some money in the house, I mean, if I lose the remote control, it's over. But when I lose some money in the house... I start seeking for it. <laughs> Some of y'all might have a little change in your pocket. Y'all might not do that. Y'all might be like, I find it when I find it. No, not me. I'm looking for it immediately. <laughs> immediately. Immediately. I'm looking for it. And I will begin to turn the house upside down to find what it is, I'm seeking for it. I'm going to pull the couch out. I'm going to pick the couches up. I'm looking in the pants I had on. I'm checking purses, bags, baby bags. I'm looking under the baby bed. I'm looking everywhere. Why? Because I'm seeking for what I've lost. And I'm not stopping until I get what I'm seeking for. He says, seek him. Seek him. Not, don't just play with it because we like to say, oh, you know, I prayed and I didn't hear anything. And, you know, I just, I don't think this Jesus thing is for me and I don't think it worked. No, he said seek him. The Bible says seek yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. Seek him. Yeah. He said seek him with all your heart. Yeah, yeah. And he says be responsive to his guidance. Be responsive. What does that mean? That means that I've, I've, I've sought him and I've, I've taken this opportunity to seek him. And now I'm, I'm listening. Lord, what is it that you want me to do? How do you want me to respond? What is it that you want me to say? How? Okay, Lord, I'm, I'm just going to wait for you. It's, it's, it's I'm resp response. Be responsive. That means something happens and I'm responding to, to what was said. I'm responding to the wisdom that he's given me. I'm responding to the word that he's showing me. I'm responding to the wisdom of the people that he's put around me. I'm responding to that scripture that just popped up in my spirit. He says, seek me and then be responsive to his guidance. And you will certainly not carry out the desire of your sinful nature intentionally, aggressively, spending time with God, his word, and his people. Intentionally and aggressively spending time with God, his word, and his people. Intentionally make yourself available for deeper relationship with Jesus and for his spirit to work in you. As you do, you will begin to know him and his voice. You, okay, I hear you, Lord. You know what? This is what people say. I just felt something. No, you didn't feel you. It's not gas. <laughs> Recognize when the Spirit is telling you something or, or, or unctioning you to move or causing you to, it's just intuition. You're not that, we are not that smart. It's the Holy Spirit. He says, seek Him. Be responsive. And you will begin to know His voice. You'll begin to know His desires and, and you'll know what it looks like to walk in Spirit. 
Because you'll begin to start studying his word and you'll know uh, as, as you read and as you pour over the scriptures, you'll know what it is that he's saying. You'll, you'll know what he's talking about. You'll, you'll, you'll see how that, that applies to your life. You'll, you'll see yourself immersed in the scripture. And then when decisions come that you have to make, when it's time for you to stand up, when, when you have to make a, a certain decisions that may not be popular, when you have to say something that may not be popular, when you have to take a stance, you know because you're backed up. When you're walking, even when the, the instant comes where, you know, people be trying you now and your flesh begins to rise up, see, the Holy Spirit is there like, calm down, calm down. I, I fight your battles. And instead of you popping off like you used to do, you're like, okay, all right, praise God, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> You'll begin to notice a difference in how you act. Before, I might have said a few choice words to you, but hey, you know what? I'm making a decision to walk in the Spirit. Before, I might have uh, uh, been, been, been wigging out because, but, you know, my finances is not looking the way that I thought they would. And I'm, 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 I might have been losing my mind. But no, you know what? I'm, I'm calm because I'm trusting in God now because I've matured and I've chosen to walk in the Spirit. I realize that it's not dependent on me. So now when I'm trying to, 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 to just not, to just to do what God has called me to do. And I'm trying to not fall into the, what the scripture says, the sin that so easily besets me. I'm not focused on not trying to fall into the sin because I'm more focused on walking in the spirit. And so what happens is my focus changes. And I know this is, it's, it's, been, a, it's been a week. It's, it's, it's been a couple of weeks. It's, it's been a couple months. It's, it's, it's been a year. Why? Not because I tried to do it on my own. Because every time I tried to do it on my own, I failed. But I chose to seek him and be responsive to what he's called me to do. Walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. And as you desire more of God, you'll desire less of the world. As you desire more of his spirit, there will be no room for the flesh. As you immerse yourself in him, as you immerse yourself in prayer, as you immerse yourself in worship, as you immerse yourself in the word, there's no room for anything else. And you'll find yourself at a place where you desire him and nothing else. Him and nothing else. Why? Because I've chosen to walk in the Spirit. And as I continue to walk in the Spirit, transformation begins to happen in my life. Transformation begins to turn me from the person who I was to the person that God has called me to be. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. 